Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. So welcome to the ISAC um, webinar. So my name is Yue Ling. I'm from Monash University, Melbourne, Australia. So I am very happy to see uh, everyone here today. So I would like to briefly introduce ISAC um, and the ISAC Early Career um, Research Working Group. So under ISAC, there are actually 21 working groups. Our early career working group uh, work closely with ISAC as well as other ICE early career researchers members, uh, focusing on uh, serving a platform to communicate with uh, senior researchers and, and providing um, our early career scientists uh, worldwide opportunities to build long lasting network or collaborations. Our working group leadership teams are actively working with ISAC and other ECR members to propose programs and events for the ECR community. So if you are interested and have any ideas, feel free to join the team. So we have our QR code here. So if you are interested, please scan the QR code and um, you know, reach out to us and join this um, working group. So one final thing is that this year uh, we have uh, annual meetings and that will take place in, the, um, in Turkey. We also have um, specific and dedicated um, travel grants as well as research awards for um, early career scientists. Um, so if you are interested, um, please register. So we really hope to see you all in Turkey this year. So it is my great pleasure to introduce you to a well-renowned expert in the field of clinical pharmacy as well as pharmacology. So that is welcome, Professor Zhao. Thank you for um, the kind introduction, Dr. Uh, Yu Weiling. So my uh, great pleasure to um, give this talk. Um, so today I will um, present some uh, antimicrobial uh, therapy in children. So I will focus on the uh, new, uh, new method principally the, the model-informed uh, precision dosing approach. So uh, firstly, I will talk about uh, uh, developmental pharmacology. This is the uh, uh, scientific uh, basis for, uh, for, the, for the dosing in, in, in children. And in the, in the second part, I will show uh, some example how to use a, a new methodology, how to use the model to inform the precision, precision dosing and how to optimize the uh, antimicrobial uh, therapy in, in children. So uh, the, the children is, uh, is in a developmental uh, stage for the continued uh, uh, development and the age is an uh, uh, indispensable uh, demographic characteristic in medical research. So with age, every, every cell and organ in the human body changes this change can result in the uh, specific uh, physiological uh, characteristics at each stage of full uh, life circle, which also affects the entire metabolism of a uh, 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 drug in the body and thus affects the, the efficacy and the, the safety. So our group is focused on the developmental uh, research and according to the um, uh, SH, so the children can be uh, classified according to um, to the uh, principle of the developmental changes. So namely the preterms, uh, newborns, terms, uh, newborns, uh, infants, children, and adolescents. And the children are not a, a microsome of a, a, a adult. The so organ structure and the physiological uh, function of pediatric population are different from those of adults. And even at uh, varying ages in the pediatric population, there are some difference in their physiological characters. And this difference also affects the uh, efficacy and safety of uh, uh, chalk therapy. And for example, um, the BSA to, to body weight continues to change as uh, children's girls. And this change affects the, the topical concentration of talks, which varies and the fluid, uh, fluid volume, etc. So the protein binding affects the concentration of uh, free talks, which in turn affects the entire um, ADME of the talks. 
This can be also seen in the skin and the muscle uh, maturation. And for the most important uh, the absorption, the, or, uh, the oral uh, preparation receives a gastro uh, instrumental infect, for example, the gastro pH and uh, CVP3A4, both affects the truck uh, availability while the uh, untimely time has an impact on both the uh, blood concentration and also the time to speak. When it comes to the organ effect, uh, the, the, the drugs, you can't get around the, the liver and kidney. So however, the, li uh, the liver development in children is uh, allegedly due to the growth cycles. So whereas most drugs are subject to the metabolism by the liver, which is a uh, uh, primary place uh, to talk uh, our metabolism. Uh, so you have a lot of the, uh, the cytochrome in the liver, uh, the ontogeny, the ontogeny of the enzyme can give a, a, a full impact in the drug, uh, uh, drug uh, metabolism. So, the same example we can see for the kidney. I will show you the example later to show how the uh, liver and the kidney maturation can affect the ADME of top. And this study we, we have done in, in uh, three years ago to show uh, for the high binding, uh, high protein binding talk and how the albumin level can affect uh, the, the talk um, uh, free concentration. And you can see in the left, uh, left uh, figures uh, for the uh, self tiaxone uh, for the self tiaxone a very high uh, protein binding talk. The newborns has a very uh, high unbound fraction compared to the uh, infants and the children. And this is also reflection for the uh, albumin levels and for the low albumin level group you have a higher uh, unburn fraction uh, compared to the higher albumin group. And this phenomenon we have also shown for the uh, cyphoprazonin uh, and the tendency is different between the, uh, between the two uh, trucks. And for the metabolism, each um, ontogeny have a special reserved uh, his, uh, rate of maturation. And in this picture, you can you can see uh, the live picture is for the omeprazole, and uh, as you know, the omeprazole is a, a, a pop talk for the CYP two C nineteen, and in the uh, blue uh, ones, this is a, a CYP two C ninety per metabolism, and allowing for the increase of age, you can see the clearance is not increased uh, so much, but for the uh, CYP 2C19, uh, ultra metabolism and the maturation uh, can have a very high rate of uh, uh, maturity. So th this, this, uh, this case we show how the age can uh, influence, can impact for the uh, pharmacogenetic maturation. And in the right part, you can see the example for the dark limits and for the each uh, uh, CYP2C, uh, CYP3A5 group, the maturation also different between the two groups. And for the kidney, uh, you have lots of uh, factors can influence the, the, the kidney elimination for the current weight, accurate age, and also have uh, various uh, biological index can reflect the, the renal uh, function. And we have done a lot of, for most of the antibiotics uh, eliminated by the kidney. This, this picture show four cases for the uh, cyphodoxin, amoxicillin, uh, azoxylocin, and also piperacillin. And you can see the clearance uh, increase with the uh, uh, increasing of the age and this age can be reflected for the GA, for the PMA, etc. And each example show the age, how to maturate the kidney uh, maturation have the impact for the clearance of the antibiotics. And this maturation has, has also his uh, reserved 
uh, uh, rate for different uh, ontogenic maturation and also postnatal maturation. And this figure show for the cyprofloxacin uh, with different group of the uh, uh, JA, uh, which is the marker of the internal maturation, the post uh, the post maturation can be different between the, the two group between the, the three groups. So uh, in plus of the uh, the uh, maturation factors, the disease factors also affect the ADME of the choice. Uh, here we show the example we have uh, we have for the uh, vancomycin and for the uh, ceftriaxin uh, with the normal recommended dosing. We have a very uh, lower touch uh, with uh, those recommendations. ARC, for example, the augmental uh, renal clearance patients, we need to increase those and to achieve the uh, target. And this is the case also for the uh, leukemia patients. And for the vancomycin, it's a empirical dose, uh, 40 to uh, 60 milligram per kilo per day, received uh, uh, 76 uh, uh, subtherapeutic uh, traffic concentration in patients. So we have to increase the 80 and uh, milligram per kilo per day to uh, to decrease the risk of, uh, of the treatment failure. But we also use some model uh, tools, model approach to increase the personal dose. We, I will show you later the, the case. And this phenomenon, we have also done some mechanism research to explain why in the leukemia patients, we have very uh, low concentration. And we have shown in the uh, uh, looking at mice, the uh, transporter, for example, the OTC2 and OAT3, um, we have the higher uh, activity compared to the normal uh, population. And for the MDR1 uh, increased, and also for the MRP2 and MRP4, the activity um, is decreased. All this change in the trans, uh, transporter in the special uh, leukemia uh, patients result in the change of the PK and thus the PD. So the first part we show um, the maturation have a, a fundamental uh, uh, and the disease have a fundamental in the uh, developmental uh, PK and PD in children. And uh, there are some, some um, why uh, novel uh, methodology and approach can be uh, used uh, to optimize individual uh, therapy. So model informed precision dosing um, have a reserved uh, advantage because in, in, in the clinical trial, so we have to execute a lot of um, uh, patients with uh, uh, different uh, concomitant, concomitant uh, polypharmacy and the serious condition, etc. So. Uh, it can can't give a, a represent uh, uh, represent of real life of patients. So, so um, for the MIPD is defined as the use of uh, modeling simulation to predict and individual the dosing arrangement uh, based on their individual uh, characteristics. So in every group, we have uh, various uh, tools to to realize this this approach. We have a different modeling approach like uh, the population PK and uh, PPPK and the QSP machine learning, etc. So the uh, the final approach uh, target is to have the uh, treatment regimen. And in recently, we also try to develop the decision making uh, system to realize the uh, the model based uh, dosing. So for various um, uh, indications such as the uh, 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 EOS uh, early sepsis, the late onset sepsis, CAP, and the melanin, we have a large uh, application. And for the neonatal sepsis, this is a lot, uh, the biggest uh, uh, rich stage study we have uh, so far in, in China. We include 4, uh, 40 million 
uh, patients to have the uh, characteristics for the different disease. And for the neonatal uh, sepsis is ranking among uh, the second uh, infection disease and uh, the mortality uh, can be reached uh, uh, the 90%. And for the to uh, trux uh, therapy in China have a different uh, uh, situation compared to the other countries because uh, uh, aminoglycoside is forbidden. And also for the uh, uh, bacteria, we are uh, mailing uh, the, uh, the E. coli and not like other countries. So uh, we need some uh, uh, lot of uh, new drugs and new therapeutics uh, based on the uh, our study to to realize how to use these antibiotics in 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 our clinical practice. So three step uh, is very important to realize this this research. So the first is to have the PKPD data, and the second is to have the uh, explorer response based on the PKPD data. And the third step is very important to have a clinical evaluation to show the clinical utility of this model-based dosing. And in the for the neonate until uh, until now we have uh, already have a, a very large data set include uh, nine centers in China and also the twenty. Uh, centers in, in around the world, I, we have success, uh, successfully to recruitment more than uh, 2,600 patients in this, uh, in this cohort. And for different drugs, we have already for the piperacillin, amoxicillin, uh, azaloxicillin, et cetera, uh, based on the model, the microbiological uh, efficacy attainment increased by uh, thirty three percent based on the model, and when we evaluate this dose in clinical practice, the treatment duration reduced from the thirty days to uh four point four days, uh in this treatment, and this is a a, a big increase in the treatment uh, uh duration reducement in based on this uh optimal dose. And in addition to the uh, the the sepsis, this is amazing. We can see uh, in the neonate, we also have the addition uh, uh, further uh, uh, research in the uh, melanin. And for the melanin, we have a different situation because uh, the plasma can't can't present the uh, target exposure for the for this disease. So how we can use uh, the P how we use the PKPD to optimize the uh, local discount of the infraction is a, a key question for the uh, melanin treatment. And for the uh, for the for this disease, from now we have already uh, recruited more than three hundred patients. We have the compared the plasma and the CSF uh, concentration to evaluate. Uh, the uh, uh, permeability of this uh, drug. And this is the result for the vancomycin. We just finished this study. This is the most uh, largest study for the moment. We have shown uh, in plasma, there's no uh, relationship between the AOC and the clinical uh, improvement uh, replaced by the CRF and also other markers. But when we use the model to predict the uh, CSF concentration in the in the brain, and you can see in the uh, right side, the AOC and the CMAX is linked with the improvement of the uh, treatment. So this is a uh, first study we can show the model-based study. We use uh, 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 plasma and uh, uh, CSF uh, model and we can predict the uh, uh, CSF concentration in the individual patients. And based on the CSF exposure, we can optimize the uh, efficacy of these patients. Uh, this is blood and this is the brain data. 
And the ER uh, analysis show for the efficacy evaluation based on the uh, intracellular exposure, we have the uh, baseline. Uh, you can you can see for the baseline uh, uh, protein uh, lower than the five uh, hundred milligram per liter, the fifty milligram per kilo um, four times can reach the PTA seventy eight percent. And for the higher than the protein uh, in in brain, more than five hundred milligram per liter, and the same uh, dose regimen can reach the eighty five percent target uh, regimen. And efficacy evaluated based on the blood uh, 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 blood uh, po exposure can uh, decrease the risk of the uh, the the kidney uh, nephrotoxicity. So the new um, dose regimen uh, uh, recommendation for the melanin can be based on the model. And this is an application uh, scenario and uh, we can use a PopPK model to initialize the initial dose and based on the uh, 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 screening data in, in CSF concentration and also the uh, plasma concentration, we can further uh, optimal the, the maternal dose and optimal dose in the melanin treatment. The safe case we can uh, we can show for the CAP and for the CAP the concentration in the in the uh, in the above is important for the for the dose optimization and uh, the case we have shown for the self zone we evaluate the target uh, target seat exposure the plasma uh, the blood uh, uh, ratio to the uh, to the ELF, and we have very high um, concentration in the target organ. So, in in addition to the traditional uh, modeling uh, population uh, PK model, we also try to use uh, uh, AI technology to in, in improve the uh, target achievement. And a lot of my third exposure we have show uh, in, in four years ago, our PhD student, uh, Dr. Tang have show uh, with the individual clear, clearance prediction, uh, using the machine learning can increase the individual practice, uh, prediction more than 30%. And this uh, approach show a bite result compared to the traditional maturation model and also the PMA weight scaling model. And based on the on this methodology, we show for the for example, first example for the vancomycin, the initial dose can be predicted using the machine learning model based on the nine covariate. And the first improvement can be based on the first monitoring uh, concentration. So this scenario can increase the overall uh, accuracy more than uh, 40%. And this year we show this picture how we combine the micro uh, microbial data, the host data for trucks, and also the uh, PK data and into the clinical practice. We also show in in this year the CBT the recommendation for the uh, for the uh, uh, for the machine learning because machine learning for the for the moment they have a lot of limitation for the inappropriate uh, exclusion, limit the sample size, lack of uh, interpretability and the lack of the clinical uh, validation, et cetera. So we propose uh, 11 uh, recommendations such as how we analyze the code, how we analyze the validation process and conduct the, the final uh, uh, clinical validation for the new method. And uh, just in the 10 days ago, we published uh, in the uh, uh, biomedicine for the new methodology, how we validate this uh, machine learning clinical practice. We use the uh, uh, five uh, beta lactam for the amoxicillin, uh, ceftiazim and the cefodoxin, uh, meropronam and also the datamoxif in, in neonate. We use a new machine learning to develop the CTSS uh, 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 system and this uh, system based on the uh, five initial module includes uh, uh, bacterial patients characters 
uh, truck concentration and also the patient characters, this can be uh, first uh, initialize uh, the prediction of the initial dose. And based on the uh, external validation in the real uh, data site, we conduct a further uh, validation study to show if this validation is, is uh, the predictive performance is, is enough in, in practice. And this CDSS system also um, compare with normally uh, guideline uh, recommended dose regimen have a very high uh, improvement. And now this application has already uh, developed in software and also in the web uh, to use in, in, in practice. So you can, you can see the uh, phone application for this uh, uh, decision making system and uh, uh, for the initial dose design for the dose optimization and all the process can be uh, run uh, automatically to have uh, the dosing optimization. So this is my uh, my last slide. Last slide. So thanks for all the uh, all our collaborator uh, in these years to support this very large data site, and also for the uh, funding from the uh, from different projects. Also in the uh, early the FB seven project, the uh, open twenty twenty project, and also the major top project in China to support this our uh, research work in both the China and Europe. And also for you, uh, for you kind um, support of uh, our research and also for you can, uh, for your listening and sorry for, for the loss of connection uh, times during the presentation. Thank you. So thank you so much, Professor Anzal for, um the presentation is really, um, you know, exciting to see a lot of um, integrations between traditional um, farm metrics as well as machine learnings. And um, thank you so much for um, sharing, you know, sharing different aspect of, you know, um, I guess um, PKPDs as well as machine learning in uh, special populations, pediatrics. So uh, it's not question time. So a friendly reminder. So if you do have any questions, please post them in a que questions and answer box just down there um, on your screen. So we do have a few questions. So then I um, will, um, you know, quickly um, ask Professor Zhao. So the first question um, comes from um, someone who um, I, I think currently is developing a PK models for critically ill children um, for ECMO as well as CRT for antifungals and antibiotics. So I guess his question is a, a, a more of a generic one. So he wanted to use how can um, he uses his um, population PK models um, for um, model informed precision dosings. So uh, maybe Professor Zhao, you can provide some generic guidance on how he could translate his models um, maybe into an app that you just show um, a few seconds ago. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks for this nice question. I think I think f since my my PhD stu study, I have uh, start to 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 realize how we can uh, analyze and how we can use the model in, in practice. This is a key question for the clinician. And in our early study, we have shown we try to compare all the published model in the vancomycin, for example. This is a, a basic talk we have used for many years, for more than fifty years. And we compare the different model, and the uh, other model show is a is uh, show shows the uh, uh, prediction bias compared to the others. So we start to reflection what's the what's the difference and what's the main problem. So I think the first uh, first uh, suggestion is to have a data sharing to 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 understand uh, why the model in in one century and in one countries can be used or can be cannot be used in other population. This is the first step we should try to understand the, the data difference between the study. And the second one is to have a, a clinical evaluation because if we only look at the PTA, only look at the bacteria, et cetera, we always can have a, a, a dosing recommendation based on the one or two, based on, on the uh, different MIC, et cetera. But if we 
don't evaluate in clinical practice, we never know this dose regimen is correct or, or not, or it's just a, 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 a number game, et cetera. So clinical, clinical, um, clinical validation is very important. It's not only in the, in the target achievement, but also in, in the key uh, uh, culture and clinical parameters for the CRP, for the uh, for the uh, treatment duration and for the success uh, for the uh, for the toxicity etc. So this is mainly when we do the model when we try to reflection the model practice and uh, uh, some some reflection from our groups. It's not, we we can't say it's a recommendation. We just have some reflection. Yep. Thank you. And so we're seeing um, many MIPD publications out there, um, and I, especially in, in antibiotics, I guess, because one of it's also recommended by, um, I guess, the, the, the US guidelines, the bank things that it's best, be, best to use um, you know, MIPDs to calculate AUC for those optimizations. Yet we still don't see a lot of MIPD in practice. And that's maybe due to um, regulatory issues, um, whether it's a medical device or um, you know so on. So, uh, just, could you maybe share a bit about the the current landscape in China, or um, or around the world about MIPD? Is it um, being treated as a you know a men medical device, and you know is it is it, is it widely accepted in the clinical communities? Yeah, it's a very good uh, question. So. So medical de device is 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 how to say it is a a, a standard tool in in practice because for the clinician of it that's why we're trying to develop the CDSS system because this is what uh, we we use the words modeling we use the words the modeling based talk is for the pharmacometrician but if we talk to to the clinician or to the to the uh, practitioner they always say okay. Uh, so you have the model, you have a dose, but this dose, um, if we do the decision system, how we can in integrate in the in the practice? This is the, the very, very hard question for us. So in the CTSS system, let's say, uh, this can't be only based on, 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 on some PTA calculation. It's also based on the for example, the decision tree, if we have the CRP, if we can't stop the treatment or not based on the, the different signal, uh, 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 clinical syndrome, et cetera. So the dosing uh, recommendation is not a, a, a fixed game. Let me say it's not we gave a dose, uh, that's all. This is only the start of the game. So in mm -hmm. whole treatment, uh, uh, history, we should show how it can be used. For the medical device, is 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 true. Is a, a, a different country. There's so uh, there's a lot of regulatory uh, requirement in different countries. And uh, uh, let's say we only try to develop the app app uh, uh, application for the moment and try to use in in, in our local. Uh, hospital in in by our uh, clinician, but not for the moment. We should think about. We also think about how to uh, how to do in a large uh, in a large uh, uh, validation study before before its commercial decision, etc. So we also welcome uh, 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 the, the the researcher. Uh, if you are interested, we can share uh, with you, and we can do some. Uh, clinical validation of the, the system and try to make it uh, wider uh, use in, in, in by the clinician. Yep, thank you. So we have a follow-up questions here. So what is the most common uh, overlooked aspect when implementing an MIPD tool in actual clinical settings? Um, uh, let's say it's, it's, it's quite quite difficult, like, like say it's a, the, the implication because uh, for the moment, for example, in our group, we have uh, 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 20 people in the group can, can also do some uh, fibromatric uh, for both the clinical trial and the practice. And uh, this is often 
uh, we have the website and we have also the, 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 the tool, et cetera, to have some offline work. And, but uh, for the online automatic uh, calculation or for the online tool, they're still um, uh, in, in test, I think. Uh, so I think uh, it's, it's difficult for the moment to see uh, we have we have a very uh, very uh, frequent uh, application and, and and so still still work to do. Got it. And I guess that switch gear a bit to machine learning. So machine learning is coming very very hot now. I guess especially in the direct development well as well as in clinical pharmacology. I guess the, the biggest issues with machine learning is that you kind of need a lot of data in comparisons to the the traditional like pharmacometric approach. So could you maybe um, comment on uh, data qualities as well as amount of data that you need? And that's say if you don't have enough data, what sort of approaches you could, could you use to um, overcome that um, limitations? Okay. So this is what um, we have a, a, a large uh, discussion with different scientists in the machine learning. As a, as a beginning to that for the, for the, um, uh, math, uh, math, uh, mathematic peoples, they also say, okay, we have a large site, so we can got what we have. And uh, for the moment, uh, in the PK data site we received, we have the K, we have all in the K uh, maturation uh, parameters for the for the children, for example, the age, weight, etc. Mm -hmm. I think for the machine learning, mo most uh, in the PK, let's say, we have a different stage. For the moment, we work in the PK, and the PK it show better uh, description of the clearance between different covariate for the many uh, physiological parameters. That means uh, we did we never test some 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 unrealistic uh, covariate. We just use a common PK data site, and we have discussion with some uh, adult study. They mm. didn't show the better. Um, uh, prediction. I think this is only because the covariate in in adults some sometimes we never get the key uh, covariate. But in mm -hmm. the children, let me let's say the age weight always have a very uh, very important in, impact. And uh, for the PD part, we start to think about how to improve in the PD, and this uh, uh, reserved advantage for the machine learning because uh, we have uh, some further example for the moment we, we, we have already some result but didn't show today is for the uh, efficacy prediction as show much better results than the, P, than, the, than the traditional PD model because uh, we can include some uh, basic and also for some uh, some uh, some physiological, uh, clinical parameters at the beginning, and mm -hmm. show they show the relationship very good, and I think this is a, 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 a novel tool because for the PD for our traditional PD model we have some assumption we should have some uh, mm -hmm. some physiological meaning, but for the machine learning, when you have the data you can try to have the relationship, you can have a very complex relationship between the PK and the different PT parameters. So I think uh, with further improvement in the in the PD and also efficacy, this is have a, a very new uh, new tool for us to to explore the the, the, the data. Yeah, so I guess then just final last questions to wrap up the session today. And then I guess one of the career advice that you would give to, um, I guess, junior scientists or junior pharmacists, do you think they should spend time on learning new techniques in machine learning? Because at the moment there are, like I'm at page now and uh, I see a lot of machine learning things, okay, right. um, thing, the page, the ACOPS, and uh, I think there are also discussions how machine learning perhaps metrics. Then what's your view on this uh, for young scientists? Do you think they should perhaps spend more time on learning more of the data science, like, you know, machine learning and see how that can be integrated into pharmacometrics? Because after all, I'm seeing a lot of automated machine learning algorithms and there are also new machine learning algorithms you can use to describe the data, like the one you just shown. So your advice would be very much appreciated to our audience. Thank you. 
Okay, thanks for this nice question for the Dr. Lin. So I, I think it is is uh, when when ten ten years ago we also think about the same same things for the young uh, uh career uh, young scientists we also show okay the new world is 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 amazing so we need to to learn and we should learn. but but I think uh from from my experience uh. Maybe in two uh, ten years, uh, ten years uh, uh, in the next ten years, there's also new methodologies. There's also new methodology, etc. So we need to learn, but we we should never uh, forgot what's the objective to learn, because uh, is to predict the, the efficacy. Is about to predict the safety. So you can always use a new tool, but you should define uh, firstly which is your uh, y and which is your x. That's what I also told to my student. Before you 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 learn, the 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 tool is just basic skill. But for the pharmaco uh, pharmacologist, you should think about the 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 scientific question was your 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 research topic, and you should uh, define firstly which your uh which your y why you use to predict these parameters. And which is X is better to collect it, the data to predict your mm -hmm. object. Thank you so much, Professor Zhao, for um, your time and for your presentation today. So we learned a lot from your presentations. And so with that, so thanks and we'll see you uh, in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.